This is a Merlin banjo that I bought recently. It's a five string long neck banjo. Or, uh, it's made by the Merlin Manufacturing Company in Chicago, Illinois in the 60s from what I can tell or what I can find out. It's got really unique construction and uh, unique design. That's why I wanted to uh, it needed some work anyway, so I wanted to go ahead and take it apart and show it to people in case anyone was interested in this or anyone had one and wanted to see what it looked like inside. Um, we'll start up here with the peg head. The peg head is uh, pretty thick uh, cast aluminum housing with a chrome plating. Uh, I've taken all the glue and everything off of this already, but this would be glued in normally. There's countersunk holes for the screws and for the assembly that holds the tuners in place. I've already loosened all this up so I'm going to take this out take this out to show you. These are 36 to 1 ratio tuning pegs which is quite high but uh, haven't had a chance to really try them out yet to get it rebuilt <clears throat> but I did do some repair work on these gears and this whole assembly pulls out of here and uh, give you a shot of that um, one of the gears had fallen off there, but I'll get that on later. Um, here's to show you the inside of the casting of the peg head and the uh, worm gear mechanisms that, that are attached to the tuning pegs. Now if we move on to the neck, you'll see that this is uh, peg head uh, gearbox is attached to the neck. When I remove this fingerboard, you'll see um, a single screw set screw and a roll pin attaches the headstock to the neck. So that comes off of there. And detaches from the neck like that. And as you can see the neck is also a cast aluminum hollow with a uh, gear mechanism for the fifth string and uh, it's uh, chrome plated and the fingerboard is just glued onto and in, you know, into this recessed part of the casting. The fingerboard is notched out on the back side to accommodate that set screw or that uh, allen screw that holds in here and also notched out here on the back to accommodate the gear for the fifth string peg. You can actually see the f back of the fret on the uh, on the neck there where it's, where it's uh, routed out. Here's uh, the fifth string peg which is inside underneath the neck. Again it's a 36 to 1 ratio tuner with a worm gear that turns a gear inside that's attached to this brass uh, mount again with a set screw and roll pin, a common theme which they had up here, and that drives a uh, that gear will then again drive the uh, the post where the string is attached for the fifth string. It's a pretty unique setup. Again, quite a lot of effort went into machining all of this. Um, not surprised they didn't make too many of these. <laughs> then we go on to the neck attachment. I guess this is some sort of a truss rod. It's got an adjustment down here. Not sure that this thing would ever work, but in case it did there's your adjustment. Um, I'm going to show the attachment of how the neck attaches to the rim which is uh, attached with these three bolts and they, uh, they hold it down or fasten it, that's the muscle that holds it together. The three shorter set screws are, uh, are the adjustment so you can adjust this uh, angle forward or backward and even uh, to some degree side to side with, uh, with this level of attachment here, this, all this adjustment. So now that's just right off of there and here's the back of the uh, bottom of the casting of the neck with the threaded holes for the uh, and then this uh, allen screw here comes out to take off the mounting block that is used for attaching the neck. It has a tailpiece that is through with a roll pin on a hinge 
So and uh, the armrest is cast right into the top. Sets or the uh, screws on the back, Phillips screws on the back, adjust the tension. Fiberglass rim with a simple brass hoop on the inside for a ring. So that's the Merlin banjo. I'm going to do some repairs to it, put it back together, and hopefully have another video showing uh, it tuned up and playing. Thanks.